Hi, I'm Brother Lars Jordan, pastor of the New Bethel Baptist Church located at 2729 Oak Grove Road in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And today our Sunday school lesson for October the 4th, 2020 is Revealed Love. And our Bible scriptures today are taken from 1 Samuel, the 19th chapter, verses 1 through 7. And our the quarterly theme that we're going through right now is love for one another. And our unit of study is inclusive love. Love is the thing that we've been going through, love for one another. And we have gone through this for, for a, a month now, and now we know that it, it is one of the most powerful words in the scripture. The reason that the word is so powerful is because of what 1 John 4 and 8 tells us, that he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is Love, God, that is the very person of God, love is, and that is godly type love. And the godly love that we know about in the Christian community is is, is agape, and we use it for sometimes like we're putting peanut butter on a piece of light bread, but that's not the way that it is to be used because it's not a love of a feeling. It's not a feel love. It's a love that makes a choice and say, I love you in spite of how you're treating me, and we're actually going to be dealing with that as we move into the, the, the Gospels when we move out of out of this first Samuel as we start in the next week. But we, we'll, we'll be moving into some of, some of those things. But love is it's a strong, it, 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 it's, it's so strong and powerful that it, the godly type love is because it is a choice. It is the love that says, even though you have mistreated me, even though you have handled me in that type of way, the choice that I have is to either hate you or, or love you, and I choose to love you because I am linked to the Savior. I'm a, I'm a part of the Christian community, so love is stronger than hate, and love can win you even to Christ, and that's the way that we, that we feel about it. The loves that are mentioned in the scripture is, is the phileo and the agape. Those are the are the main two, and Jesus did let us know that even the 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 heathens they have love for one another because they one treat one one good and the other treat them back like that. But that's not agape love. Agape love is a love of choice. It is a love that is an unconditional love, the love that God displayed toward us. But the love for the brotherly love that we have for the the general well-being of others that are around is phileo. We love them brotherly. We care about their well-being. We don't want them to hurt even though they may have hurt us as we forestated. Love is it's a, it's a powerful word. And in our scripture today, we see one of the, one of the greatest uh, loves between brothers that, that we find in the scripture. And there was a kindred spirit. It was John Fawcett that said, blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. The fellowship of kindred mind is like to that above. David and, and Jonathan would have that type of love, that kindred spirit that, that ran in both of their veins. And we, we don't see it right here in this particular scripture. And it's often not talked about in relationship to their, uh, the, the relationship that these men had to one another. But there was a kindred spirit because Jonathan was one that, that was kind of a daredevil too with, when he took his armor bearer and said, let's go out and, and fight these guys. We'll, 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 we'll go fight them and, and we'll see if we can win the battle. But he, here is where they really linked up. He said, God can fight the battle where there's a, a, a lot of people to fight or just one or two to fight. That, that was this man, Jonathan, this, this, the, the man, his name meant the, the Lord has given. And when we, we talk about this man, Jonathan, he was a true friend of brother David and, and, and they became like brothers there as, as they uh, was there together. 
And he was one that the, you find that in the 14th chapter where he did attack the, the, the Philistine garrison or whether the Philistines were held up, he and his armor bearer and, and defeated them at, to a way that they started to run and that his father was able to bring in the rest of the troops and they were able to really give the, the Philistines a hard time that ap after he and the armor bearer went in and made that stir. So now we, we look at this in, in the... In, in the first verse of this this 19th chapter, looking at it from the from what had happened in the 18th chapter, Saul had heard the song of the ladies as they were coming back from battle. How Saul had killed his thousands and David had killed his ten thousands. And God had already rejected Saul. The, his name meaning acts of God. He, it, God had rejected him and even taken his spirit away from him, according to the 16th chapter, verse 14. God had, had taken his spirit away from him, and, and, a, and a demonic spirit, a evil spirit, had, had kind of possessed him, and every now and then it would, it would get comforted by the playing of the music by David, but still, God had taken his spirit away from Saul because of his disobedience, because of his, his not listening to the word of God, not adhering to the word of God, and doing what God wanted him to do. He even tried to have David killed on, on several occasions, tried to throw his javelin through him, and then said, I'll get the Philistines to kill him, and, and, and even started a campaign there for that in the 18th chapter there before our printed text today in the 19th chapter, and to get to gain uh, uh, to pay a dowry, he had David to go out and, and get the foreskin of two, 100 Philistine men, David went out to pay that dowry and got 200 and brought them back to the king. The, the assurance of knowing that he had done just what he said he would do when he did. Saul was sure that the Philistines would kill him when he went out to perform such a feat. And then the scripture tells us just before our lesson gets started today that now that these things had happened, he knew that God was on David's side and, and he was more afraid of David. And we look at this today, the Kendrick spirit of, of those men, both of them were kind of, 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 of fighters, kind of scrappy. He and Jonathan, they had a Kendrick spirit. Jonathan, there at the first parts of the 18th chapter, had given David, when they made their, their covenant together, had given David his 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 his, his appliances there or the the robbery that he had on his robe and his, and his belt and and all of these kingly type stuff that that was uh, that that he had because he would be the one that would come in after his father Saul but I'm sure at this point as we would find out later on he did know that David was the one God had chosen to be the king so he was handing those things over to David. But now our, our, our lesson starts and Saul is after him and Saul gets even more bold and when he finds out that the Philistines can't kill him and, and God has determined I'm, I'm afraid of this guy. So our lesson starts today with this first verse of this 19th chapter and Saul speaking to Jonathan, his son, not just Jonathan, his son, and to all his servants that they should kill David. He tells Jonathan, his son, first of all, all of these guys that are subordinate to him, he tells them that that they should kill David. Now, Jonathan couldn't just say, Dad, now, now you can't do that. He couldn't tell Saul, rather, that, that you just can't do that. I, I, you, you, there's nothing that you just can't do this. He couldn't say that because this is the king that he's talking to. And he's not in that kingly position yet, so he had he can't just speak out of turn like that. And to all the servants, uh, except the another one that was in his court, who was David himself, he told them all that they should kill David, should end David's life. That was his quest. That was what he wanted to happen to end David's life. Now, Saul would have no trouble killing David because. 
He was about to kill his son, Jonathan. That, I mean, Jonathan, it would have been easy for him to kill Jonathan. That's in the 14th chapter, verse 44. He said, Jonathan must die. He, he even admitted that after Jonathan didn't keep a, an oath that he had made. Jonathan didn't know anything about it until afterward. But still, he said, Jonathan must die. And the people convinced him not to kill Jonathan at that time. So it wouldn't have been any trouble for him to kill David. He said to them that David must die. Now, we have given you what, what each of the main characters in this lesson's name means except David. His name meant beloved. We all pretty much know that one. He was the beloved of God. So now we go to the second verse. and But Jonathan, Saul's son, delighted much in David. We just said that they made a covenant there in the beginning of the 18th chapter and because they loved one another. Jonathan really loved this guy as he loved his own self. He said had this strong affection. This He, he delighted uh, uh, a strong affection for David. He delighted much in David and Jonathan told David saying, Saul, my father, seeketh to kill thee. Now, therefore, I pray thee, take heed to yourself until morning and abide in a secret place and hide thyself. He told him, now, now my father has a, a, an, a, an aggressive and an active quest to end your life. He, he lets him know that he, my, my father, he seeketh to, and, and he, and Jonathan, because of his covenant, because of his love for this man, because of his strong affection for David, he tells him that his father has this aggressive and active quest to take his life, to, to kill him, to end his life, because he was afraid of him. Remember there at the end of, end of the 18th chapter, Saul is afraid of David. He, he, Saul has a bad demonic spirit. That, that is all, all around him and, and leading and guiding him. Sometimes it's calm and it's peaceful, but most of the time it, it wanted David just dead. Saul, my father, seeketh to kill thee, is what he said. Now, therefore, I pray thee. Now he's going to tell him how we're going to try to fix this, how we're going to try to end this, this, this war. I'm going to try to be the mediator between you and my father. I'm going to try to be the, the day's man and stand in the middle and try to bring you two together in some type of way. He says here, now, therefore, I pray thee. Take heed to yourself or you be on guard because he didn't just tell me, Jonathan, that he wants you to, you dead to kill you. He told all of his servants also. So I, I'm talking to you now and I'm telling you to take heed to yourself. I'm not going to kill you, obviously, because I'm talking to you I, and I'm not trying to threaten your life at this point. I'm even telling you what my father has said. But there are others that he told this and they might happily Take your life because they may feel like they will be rewarded some type of way. Because in the first verse, he said, not only to his son, Jonathan, his son, but also to all his servants that they should kill David. They, any of them, well, whoever gets him, bring bring his head to me is what basically what he's saying. Just like David brought Goliath's head to him. So he said, my father, Saul, seeketh to kill thee. Therefore, I pray thee. Take heed to yourself or be on guard because any of them, any of those guys out there can try to take you out. Be on guard at least until morning. Stay, take heed of yourself till morning is what he says. In the morning, in other words, he planned on doing something about the situation and abide in the secret place. Abide there means to stay there or wait in a place, in a secret place, in a place where they don't know, but obviously Jonathan would know where, where it's at. He said, and hide yourself. You hide yourself. You stay right there. Hide yourself so no one else can see you. Not just my father, not just me, but none of these other guys also because he told all of his servants that they should kill you. And verse three says, and I will go out and stand beside my father in the field where thou art, and I will commune with my father of thee, and what I see, that I will tell thee. He said, now look, I, I'm going to go out. This is what I'll do. I, I'm going to go out and I'll stand by my father in the field where you are. 
This is where your your hiding place is. This is where you're hiding from, not just from me, not just from my father, but also from all of his other servants, all of the king's court and all of the king's men. You're hiding from, from everybody when you're out here. I, I will go out and stand beside my father is what he says in the field where you are. And, and I will commune or I will have a conversation. I'll talk with my father. I'll, 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 I'll sit here and, and have, have a nice conversation with him, talk with him about the things that is going on. You, you have done what you, you, you were supposed to do. You have went out and you have, you have hid yourself. You took heed to yourself. You, you stayed right there. You waited. You've been on guard so that they wouldn't just, anybody couldn't just take you. Now, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go and sit down uh, or stand there and talk to the old man. I'm going to commune with, with my father. And what I see, or as we would say it, whatever I find out, I, that I'll tell you. I'll tell you whatever it is I find out about what my father plans to do how he plans to do this, how far he plans to take this. Now, it's, it's surely there in the minds of, of Jonathan as well as the other people that his father is determined to take the life of David. It seems that it didn't come into his mind, even though he knew, as the 18th chapter said, that God was with David, even though he knew that still he was trying in the flesh to take the life of David. Anybody, take his life. So he said, I'll find out what, what, what he wants to do and I'll come back and I'll tell you. And then he starts into his, his mediation and Jonathan spake good of David unto his father, unto Saul, his father. He spoke good of David unto his, his, Saul, his father, and said unto him, let not the king sin against his servant, against David, because he has not sinned against thee. And because his works have been to thee word very good. He starts out, he says, uh, Jonathan spoke to, uh, good of David. He, he didn't play him down, didn't try to say that he hadn't done anything for you. He didn't try to buddy up to his father. This was his friend. He loved him just like he loved himself. He, had, he delighted in this man, had a strong affection for David. This was his friend. He didn't want anything to happen to him. So he calmly talks to his father, the king, because he knew that his father wanted him dead. So he says unto his father, he says, let not the king sin against his servant. He says, David is your servant. David is, is, is a person that that works for you uh, against this man. Don't, don't sin against him or don't do any harm to him. Don't try to kill him as that's what he's talking about here when he says, let not the king sin against the servant. He was trying to say, say these things in the kindest and softest words that he could possibly put before his king and, and, and before this person that wanted David dead. And he said, because here is, here's the reason. First, because because he has not sinned against you. He's not done anything to try to hurt you. Matter of fact, I just said he was your servant. In other words, you could have told David to do just about anything and he would have followed through and went out and done it. Matter of fact, you have told him in the military campaigns and battles that he was to go into and he actually went out and performed those things just because you told him to do those things, because he has not done anything to hurt you or to wrong you or to be disobedient to you, not to be defiant to you. He went out and did everything that you asked him to do. And also because he works, his works have been to the word very good. He, every time he did something, he did it to bring you to a higher honor. It brought the kingdom. When it brought the kingdom to higher honor, it brought the king to higher honor is what he's talking about. It was very good for you and the kingdom because you are the king is, is basically what he's telling him. But there is a colon at the end of, of verse four. There is something that tells us he's going to further explain what's going on here at this point. He said, for he did put his life in his hand and slew the Philistine 
and the Lord wrought a great salvation for all Israel. Thou saw it and didst rejoice. Wherefore then wilt thou sin against innocent blood to slay David without a cause? He said here that, that he did put his life in his hand. When this ruddy little boy came to bring food and give a report back to his father, Jesse, of how his brothers were doing uh, at the front line of the army, he saw the, the Goliath making fun of the, of the Israelite people for not wanting to fight him. And he went out and he fought them himself after he convinced Saul that he wanted to go out and fight him. And he was able to see him take the stone, put it in his slingshot, and kill Goliath, the giant, the Philistine, the, the nine-foot guy. And that's in the 17th chapter of 1 Samuel. He, he killed him, and cut his head off, and brought, brought it to Saul. So Saul could actually put his eyes right on that, that head, even though he was able to see this battle happen right in front of him. And the Lord wrought a great salvation for Israel because the Philistines were scared after David killed the, the giants, killed Goliath. They were able to fight and, and wage a campaign against the, the Philistines. That was a great salvation for them that day. It was, it was great for all Israel. He, then he says this here. He, he, he puts it right in his lap. He said, you saw it. He said, you got to see this with your very own eyes. This isn't something that you didn't get to see. He said, all of these things in the fourth verse have been to thee were very good. These things were for you very good. You allowed this young Israelite man to go out and fight the Philistine giant. He killed him, and now your kingdom gets boosted up. You get to wage a military campaign against the Philistines that y'all were all afraid of initially. Now you got to see this with your own eyes. And when you saw it, he said this, you rejoiced. You were happy about these things that had happened at that time. You rejoiced, in, and this is what Jonathan lets us know. You rejoiced at that time now. Wherefore, would thou sin against innocent blood to slay David without a cause? There's no reason for you to hurt this man because he hadn't done any wrong to you. He hadn't sinned against you, and he's been very good to you. He said, and... That's an abomination to God. We, we, we know that because the scripture tells us that, that, it, that in Proverbs 6 and 17, that, that it is, uh, it's, it's against God to shed innocent blood. So it, hands that shed innocent blood, rather. So that, that is abomination to God. He said that, wherefore wilt thou sin against innocent blood? This is innocent blood. Why would you want to put your hands on him? Why would you want to hurt someone that hadn't tried to hurt you, have only worked toward bringing you up and bringing the kingdom up as even looking at you as the great king of, of Israel and, and slay David and is not even a cause to do it? Why would you want to do that? His son asks him. Now, this is the reaction of that. Verse six says, and Saul hearkened unto the voice of Jonathan and Saul swear, as the Lord liveth, he shall not be slain. Simply, it, he listened to his son. He, he stood there in the field by his son and listened to him, talk to him and say, why are you wanting to do this, man, hurt this man that have never wronged you, that was always trying to lift you up? Why are you wanting to do injury to him? It, 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 this, this actual going out and, and shed the blood of an innocent man that has only tried to help you and tried to build up the kingdom. Didn't want anyone to be able to stand there and mock the Israelite nation. Why would you want to hurt such a man? So Saul listened to the voice of the Lord has given, or Jonathan. The Lord has given this friend to David that was standing on the side of David, this revealed love, this love that was truly revealed because he went to even stand against his father uh, and speak up for David to his father Saul. And Saul swear. Now, to swear there, he made a vow. 
This, this vow that he made was as the Lord liveth, as Jehovah. This is in all caps in, in your Bible. So you know that he's talking about the God of heaven and earth. As Jehovah liveth, the, the creator of everything, he shall not be slain. Now, we just said and we, we forestated that the spirit had departed from this man Saul. God took his spirit from him. And shortly after our printed text today, he would go back into his, his own self again and he would start trying to take the life of David again. But for now, he is saying, as the Lord liveth, he shall not be killed. He shall not be slain. I, I, I'll, I'll turn off this campaign against David. I'll, I'll tell the servants, all, all the servants that I told to kill him, I'll tell them to stop is basically what he was saying at, 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 at this time. Okay, so now he's told them to, to stop. He said, I, 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 I made this vow. Verse seven says, and Jonathan called David. Hey, David, we're, we're out here in this field. And sh showed him all those things. And Jonathan brought David to Saul and he was in his presence as in times past. Now, Jonathan called David hollered out in the field or went to where he was, the secret hiding place, the, the place where he was taking heed to himself or being on guard about himself. Because remember, anybody could have tried to kill him at this time for the word of the king had gone out of his mouth. So Jonathan calls him out and brings him, him to him and showed him all those things. He told him the conversation that he had with his father, how his father had swore that had made a vow not to kill him as the Lord liveth. I, I won't try to kill David anymore. He, he, he made this, this vow and Jonathan let David know about that. And Jonathan brought David to Saul. Now this would be the ultimate test because now he would be in front of the very person. David trusted Jonathan through all of this. If he didn't, he wouldn't have came out from his hiding place. He really trusted this guy just as Jonathan loved him. David loved Jonathan and he trusted him with his very life and, and to the point that he, he they, they stood up for one another because now, because David, it came out and Jonathan, uh, father now knew that Jonathan knew where he was all the time. He could have turned against his son. So they both had to love one another the same way. So now they, they, Jonathan brought him out and Jonathan brought him to Saul right before this man that was asked of God. Do you remember Samuel was, was the person that was the last judge and, and the people wanted a king like the other nations and they didn't want the theocracy anymore. They wanted a monarch. They wanted a man that was walking before them and God allowed them to have a king. So now they have this king and Jonathan brought David to the king, to Saul, and he was in his presence. He was back in the king's court, not having to run and hide anymore for a little while, and as in times past. The times past, he was, in, he was right there in the court of the king. Even before he became king, he was playing his harp before the king, and now he is back in the place where he was before. A person without the spirit of the Lord working in their life is subject to do anything. When this, when the spirit of the Lord left this man, remember what David's plea was in the, in the 51st number of Psalms, take not thy spirit from me. The, the, the way that a person would respond and react without the spirit of the Lord is, is erratic and, and, and can get out of hand. And that's the way that Saul was in our lesson today. But the strong love that, that Jonathan had for David was revealed in his actions of going before his father, the king, who, who could have killed him and, and almost did at one time and pleaded for his friend, David, true love for one another. Father God, we do thank you today for the study of your word. And Father, we do pray that this word will simmer on our hearts and minds and help us to have a love that is a choice. Choose to love in spite of the circumstances or situation. Father, we do pray that you will search our hearts, forgive us of sin. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. <laughs>